Are we live streaming? Does it say we're live streaming? Yes. All right. Here we go. Uh, we are live streaming officially at The Word is Right, uh, collaborating with Red or Green Books this evening. That is my press, Red, R-E-A-D, redorgreenbooks.com. I am your host this evening, Marissa Prada, your publisher, uh, your editor, um, your poet in residence, because this is my residence. This is my home. <laughs> All right, maybe I'll be a poet in residence for real one day, right? I'll be I'll be a, a, a real live a real live poet one day. Um, all right, so thank you, thank you all of you so much for being here. I am super super excited. When Lizzie Strauss came to me about a year ago and said I have an idea to do an LGBTQ anthology, I was like, well, let's go. Uh, so y'all, please speak up when you have ideas and talk about it um, because this is proof that visions and thoughts can become physical things okay and your thoughts and your stories are valid and they're important and they really really do um deserve to see the light of day so thank you all for being here and celebrating this incredible book launch with us all right a couple of quick announcements i will have a special coupon this evening for the anthology. I know all of you here are probably authors, those who are not authors, who are perhaps here supporting. If you're not buying an author copy from the artist, which of course you should be, because the whole point is for them to make some money on this. But if you're watching live perhaps on Facebook or, uh, or you're just um, watching this after the fact, if you go to redorgreenbooks.com, well, this will, this coupon will only be available for 24 hours. All right. So you gotta get it today. I'm going to type it in the chat. Yes. You're asking me in the zoom room for you to get that. You, you need to be here. If you're watching live on Facebook, you need to be here for this coupon. Um, it is. All right. I will put it periodically in the chat. Uh, that is good for uh, $10 off the book. The book retails at $25. It is 100 and, uh, 163 pages. Uh, it is an incredible, incredible anthology. Cover art by Shane Maynard with Guerrilla Poets. We have 47, 48 contributors in here. It, it, 47 contributors. It's absolutely a breathtaking, mind-blowing but the reviews for those of you who are in the book, the reviews are on the website. Please go and read the reviews. Read what people are saying about your work. It is absolutely awesome. And um, I hope it gives you all the validation that you, sh you should have to keep moving forward with written word, with spoken word, and with telling your stories. Uh, red or green books.com. Red is R E A D. All right. Uh, for those of you who submitted to the Gun Violence Anthology, thank you, thank you. Thank you for that. We have almost 100 contributors. Uh, it is a phenomenal outpouring of support and love. And so I've reached out to someone in our community to um, help sponsor a very special spin-off that will accompany the book that will have the artwork in it. Uh, and so um, we're, we're really trying to do everything that we can to make sure everyone who submitted goes to print. It's, it's expensive, it's time consuming. We're a very small press, <laughs> right? And so if, if anyone watching is interested in helping us fund this program, this project, please reach out to me and let us know. The Gun Violence Anthology will uh, come out. I'm, there, our goal is December 1st, okay? And we have a special sponsor, a senator program. If you can purchase the book for almost half price, and we will send it to a U.S. state senator. Uh, on your behalf. It is completely anonymous. Of course, no one will know who's purchasing it, but uh, it is a program that is near and dear to our heart. So if you are interested in helping support the gun violence anthology, it is titled American Graveyard. Uh, thank you. Shout out to Vex Lex for that. Uh, it is named for her poem in the book. All right. Uh, time limit this evening. Um, uh, be, oh God, we have so many readers. So five, six minutes readers is, is fine. Um, you're welcome to take a minute or so and introduce yourself. I'm not going to take the time to read everyone's bios. Usually I do that, but we have so many readers this evening. Just go ahead and introduce yourself. Tell us where you're from, a little bit about yourself. If you have a platform, if you have merchandise, if you have a website, now is the time to start promoting yourself. You guys get to be in front of each other, some of you for the very first time ever. So it's really, really important uh, to promote yourself. Do not feel like you are burdening anyone by saying, hey, hey, 
follow me, buy my book, okay? We have to do this for one another. So please, please take the time to do that. All right, that um, is the announcements. If you have not come to check out The Word is Right yet, please do so. We have shows almost every day of the week and I have openings for shows. If you are interested in coming here to teach a workshop regularly or have an open mic regularly, or you have another fun show idea, uh, email me, please, Marissa at redergreenbooks.com, and we can talk about a show. All right, there's lots and lots of space to build platforms. All right. Uh, oh, I guess, sorry, the last announcement Poet Palooza. Uh, Poet Palooza is Redder Green Books' annual event, and it is the one day of the year that we invite all of our poets back to read in one epic show. And that is going to be Sunday, um, August 7th. It is uh, right around the corner. Many of you uh, who are in Out Loud have signed up to read. If you're interested in reading in that, um, I did email the, um, the Google Docs uh, uh, spreadsheet for that. You can just fill your name in where you want to read uh, and please do that. I also got, I'm getting cool bookmarks for this book, y'all. Bookmarks should be in any day. And I, I just today, I got these really awesome rainbow bubble mailers. They came in the mail, y'all. Like, they're going to fit some books in them. Um, I, the first 50 people to order books um, will have these awesome, fun rainbow mailers. If I can find these in bulk at a, a, a good price, I'll order more. Uh, but yes, uh, let's light it up. Let's go. Uh, I'm so excited. I'm so excited for this launch. Thank you all so very, very much for being brave and, and submitting and being part of this and being here today. All right, Lizzie Strauss, Elizabeth Sophia Strauss is our fearless uh, visionary on this project. She not only did uh, did all the legwork on this, but she has been the cheerleader the entire way. She's been the legs underneath this project, moving it forward. Uh, she has been resoundingly um, wonderful to work with, and I'm so honored to call her my friend. So I'll give her a few minutes to talk. I know we're going a little over, Lizzie, but I hope you don't mind. Um, yeah, whenever you're ready. I do not mind at all. I'm here for it. Um, as we say, because uh, I'm dead to him, Lizzie, the beanie god, beanie blessings to the community and everyone. Uh, I am so honored um, to be here tonight with everyone. Um, Marissa Proud and I met through the Near Recon Poets community about a year and a half ago. And I guess I learned six months into that she started her own press, Red or Green Books. Um, and, you know, I had thought about one day putting together uh, an anthology for our LGBTQ community. And we weren't as close then, but I sent her a message saying, hey, I have this idea. I just want to talk to you about it and we had a zoom meeting and she said um and i told her i have i want to put and curate an lgbtq uh, anthology i'm a queer person lesbian dyke i use that word for myself um and she said yep we're doing it and um we had our brilliant cover artist shane manor come on board who's a part of the press um and the ball got rolling maybe the beginning of this year um and it, it makes me just smile and I'm probably gonna cry throughout the night um, just cause um, it's just overwhelming to see so many openly proud, beautiful LGBTQ and queer people involved and who wanted to submit and contribute and speak their truths out loud. And the reason the title of the book is so special is because my mother actually gifted us the title of the book. Um, I was home visiting my parents on Long Island and I had to come up for a title of the book and I couldn't really think of one because sometimes I overthink when it comes to titles. And my mom said, what about Out Loud? And I said, and I brought it to Marissa and she said it was perfect. And um, just reading all the contributions going through and editing um, through the last, I guess it's been four months now, took about how long to do it. Um, it just, it made me discover more about myself um, just learn more about the world and our community, um, which is so important. And, you know, I, I did contribute an essay and a poetry monologue to the uh, anthology, but I'm not going to read it tonight. Instead, I'm going to read my editor's note. And when Marissa asked me to write the editor's note, um, I really had to think about what I wanted to talk about, um, which is one of the first pages 
of the book. And I wanted to talk about um, my ring of keys moment, um, which I will explain um, in my editor's notes. So here we go. This book has been created to show we are all valued equally and inclusion matters. The world would not be complete without LGBTQ people, especially artists. For those who are still questioning if they wanna share their truths, please remember it gets better. Gratitude to the artists who trusted us to publish their work. I did not have the confidence to say out loud, I liked women until I was 24. Though I have known since I was a tot, playing in groups, I was attracted to women. I did not see my queer self until I was 22, sitting in a New York City rehearsal studio working on the plane, play Almost Maine. This play is about journeys of falling in and out of love and self-discoveries. On a cold December day in 2013, I sat across from a brilliant actress who mentioned she was a lesbian. While taking down blocking and notes for rehearsal reports, I pulled my head out of my prom script and I saw myself for the first time, a lesbian. The actress never shied away from her sexuality when asked about it and her partner who she consistently gushed over. I was excited and apprehensive all at once. She was my ring of keys moment. Ring of Keys is a song from the musical Fun Home where the protagonist Allison realizes looking at a butch woman for the first time, she was different. She was a lesbian. I thank the actress from Almost Maine for being herself and paving the way for all of us to have our Ring of Keys moment and to be able to live our lives honestly, out loud, peace, love, and beanie blessings. Um, and that's just the truth. And it is so important we have our Ring of Keys moment, our identity moments. And I hope this book is a Ring of Keys moment for someone. This book is going to save lives. This book is going to help people talk to their families, talk to their friends, and live their lives honestly out loud. And I'm so proud of it. And I'm incredibly proud it's going to be due at big, I can't talk because I'm too emotional, debuting at the New York City Poetry Festival this September, uh, my home city where I live. And I'm looking forward to meeting many of you there, reading from the book, talking to people about the book, and just having a blast. Um, so I'm going to shut up for a little bit and want to hear the rest of you talk and your beautiful work and your journey experiences. But just thank you again to every single person who is brave and continues to pave the way. Beanie blessings and much love. Awesome. Thank you so much, Lizzie. Uh, Y'all, like, can you just do me a big favor? Can everyone just unmute real quick and give Elizabeth Sophia Strauss a huge round of applause? Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Thank you. Hard work, Elizabeth. You are the best. Yeah, I totally feel like poets here become family. It's totally true. You know, Lizzie's been um, with me on the journey of number fifteen as well, and it's totally true. Uh, when you spend enough time with people uh, in safe spaces. Uh, it becomes, you become like family. Um, I see Shane Maynard's in the house. Shane, uh, did you want to come in uh, and take a few minutes and talk about the cover art, talk about Gorilla Poets, uh, do that kind of thing uh, before we go into the rules and start the list this evening? I will show off yes. the cover art again because it's just brilliant. Out loud, an LGBTQ literary arts anthology. And of course, there's a pan coup in the front that is from our very own Elizabeth Sophia Strauss and uh, and the back as well has many of the reviews on it. It's, it's a stunning book, Shane. Thank you for your work on it. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah, it, it was an honor to work on it. And I feel like all three of us had a hand in the cover because I'll never forget like messaging you with all these photos and be like, Marissa, my child looks good. Like tell me where to position the book and the flag and everything. And um, I'm just so grateful for this team. I'm so grateful for um, the, the work that y'all are doing, it's really important. I'm so moved by the fact that all of these beautiful poets get a platform to share their story and their voice. And it's things like that, that really, really empower the world. You know? So it was really, it was really amazing. I knew I wanted, wanted the cover to, to have feel good vibes. And I think that it do, definitely does that. And um, I'm just so, 
so grateful and just congratulations everybody on the book. And the only thing I'll say about Gorilla Poets is, you know, we're we're an outreach group. We do a lot in school systems, lockdown shelters, and uh, you know, we're also in in um, crisis centers as well. So if you want, you can find out more about us. But yeah, I'm I'm happy to be here and, and to have been a part. Oh, and look who else is Thank you so much, Shane. And for those who do not know Shane, she is one of our resident artists at Red or Green Books. She has done uh, many, uh, many covers uh, for the books that we have put forward the last, uh, the last two years. You know, Shane, we, we will have published our 40th book this year. 40 books in two years we've done. 40 books, y'all. Oh my gosh, that is huge. I, I, I don't even know the quantity of the individual books. But it's a lot. Kundabini is Lizzie's book, right? That's one of them. Shane did the artwork for Kundabini. Um, it's it's absolutely amazing. And Shane, Shane's an incredibly well crafted uh, artist and um, a businesswoman as well. So please support Gorilla Poets. They support us, and we have oh, plenty of projects uh, to to look forward to in the future. Very very exciting. All right, more and more people are pouring in, so we're going to go ahead and get this started. I'll go and talk list in the chat. Again, um, the list is based off of uh, where you all signed up in the spreadsheet. So uh, if you uh, don't have that in front of you, the list I will pop in periodically uh, in the chat. For those of you who uh, maybe came a little bit late or for those who are just joining us, uh, I went ahead and did a fun coupon. I'm like, let me see. Oh, there it is. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry, and I mistyped the coupon earlier. I think I re. I'll have to start. I'm gonna have to go back and look. But uh, for those who are joining us, uh, please purchase a copy from the artist. That way, they can sign it for you. The whole point of this program is for artists to be able to sign and sell books. Uh, we want everyone to to make some you know money and not, and not be so starving. That's the buy, just, just buy them a couple gallons of gas, right? Uh, what are we talking about here? But for those who might be watching live on Facebook who maybe don't know an artist personally, uh, you can either go to the website redorgreenbooks.com or you can reach out to me personally and, uh, and you can get a book. The coupon is for $10 off. Uh, the book retails at $25. Uh, the a coupon is for $10 off. It is only good for the next 24 hours. The coupon code is in the chat. Why? Because if your ass ain't here, you're not getting the $10 off. Get your ass the Zoom room. Maybe someone who's in the chat, I mean, who's in the room today might be able to just pop the link into the uh, live feed at Word is Right so people could get here if they want. I will put that in from, from time to time uh, so that y'all will have um, that coupon code for those who don't know someone personally or uh, perhaps have not put the order in yet. There is your $10 off coupon code. All right, rules for this evening. There's a lot of people in this room, which is awesome, but I run a tight ship here. All right, so I'm gonna go over my rules here at the word is right. This is a safe space. There is uh, free speech. You can say anything that you want. You can say dick and shit and pussy and fuck and all those great, wonderful words. What you're not allowed to do is have any hate speech whatsoever. If I feel you're a threat to anyone in this room, you will be gone, baby, gone, and not allowed back in, okay? The chat is available for you to use, but not abuse. If I find that you're misusing it or I get any complaints for you from people about you in the chat, you will be gone, baby, gone, and not allowed back in. Please remember we are artists. This is our art. Do not show the answer to the performers this evening or myself without consent and no is a whole answer. All right, great summer tonight. Please keep your mic muted unless you're performing. Unmute during uh, during all you want. Uh, do not unmute your mic uh, beforehand. That will really help move things along. I think everyone who's in the room is at least has a name. If there's someone named like iPhone, you will need to rename yourself, but I'm thinking everyone looks good. So we should be good there. All right, list goes as follows for the first three poets, Lizzie Strauss, Chris Moore, and Nick Diaz are in the house. Let's go. Uh, five, six minutes. Feel free to introduce yourselves. Take some time to do that. I'm not going to talk 
I'm not gonna put you on the clock, you guys. Okay, I'm not gonna hit a button or mute you, but please just, just don't go into a 15 minute monologue. There's a lot of people to get to this evening. All right, any questions, please reach out to me personally. Let me know. Lizzie, you guys. Did, did she say me? Cause she's cutting out a little bit. Am I cutting out? Yeah, it's is it static on anyone mm -hmm. else's end or, or just mine? Yeah, she is cutting out. It's okay. on my end a so. lot. You're, okay. you're up, Lizzie. Well, I will. I will be. All right, so, sorry, Lizzie. Yes, the next three poets is Lizzie, Christopher Moore, and Nico Diaz. Okay. Well, I'm gonna do a pleasant gesture, and because I read my editor's note and uh, not read my contributions and defer to the next person. Uh, artist, but if you want to read um, what I've contributed, including my editor's note to the anthology, please buy a copy and support all the artists uh, who poured their heart and souls into this book. So I'm looking forward to hearing the rest of the artists this evening. Thank you. Wow. All right. So let me unspotlight Lizzie real quick. Uh, next up, we got Christopher Moore. Um, are you ready, Christopher? <laughs> yeah, uh, thanks, Lizzie. <laughs> um, okay, yeah. Uh, yeah, I can do one. <clears throat> Good, let me just bring it up. Uh, I guess I'll do the one called uh, By Island. Sometimes it's hard to tell others I am bisexual. Gay guys sometimes have weird reactions when I do. Oh, you want to have your cake and eat it too, they say. Don't worry, after being with me, you won't, you won't want a woman ever again. No, get over yourself, want to be Adonis. Nothing will change. What kind of guy I tend to find cute. No, I'm not looking for a boyfriend. I don't need help finding one. When you are bisexual, it often can feel like you're on an island an island where not everyone understands what you really want. Thinking bi is just a pit stop deciding between homosexuality and heterosexuality. I myself know what I am though, and I will not let others dictate what it is to be a bisexual man. Thank you. Just a reminder, you guys have five minutes. So Christopher, you can read a little more if you want. Also, you can talk about where people can find you. Like if you have a show on Word is Right called More Poetry with Christopher Moore. <laughs> yes, you took the words right out of my mouth, like Marissa. Your social media yes. handle. <laughs> well, I will say now that you said it, yes, I do host on the Word is Right More Poetry every second and fourth Wednesday of the month, 7.30 to 9 p.m. Eastern time. And also great news, I am being a feature, not once, but twice in August. Um, on August 2nd, I will be a featured author, guest author on Spofest. Um, my book, Icarus Falls, will be raffled off with a signed copy. And another event that I'm going to do, thanks to Liera Creeman, who is here, um, I will be doing a feature on Reach Art August 5th. That sounds awesome. Yes. Crystal, I'm trying to close out extra stuff on this little Chromebook uh, because I don't want to keep cutting it out. Uh, let's go. Please, uh, please like, share, subscribe, follow to everyone. Feel free to drop your stuff in the chat. Uh, let's keep uh, let's keep this going for for one another this evening. Just a quick reminder: uh, this show is being translated uh, into American Sign Language (ASL). So, for you readers and myself, because I do tend to talk quite fast, uh, as you know, I'm always trying to get through the time. Uh, if we could please just remember to speak clearly and and at least not as fast as me, okay? Like, let's slow it down a little, if you would, please. Uh, so our ASL interpreters are not um, not wearing out their hands. All right, next up, Nico Diaz, are you ready? Is Nico here? Oh, Nico's not here. All right, I'll put him off to the side. 
just in case he winds up coming late. Just wanted to double check. All right, let me, I'll just make a note of, of that. All right, next up, we got Pell, oh my God, yes, I'm so excited to hear from Pell. We have Pell, Robert F, and Jacob R. Moses are next three. Are you ready, Pell? Yes, I'm ready. Hello from Denmark. So I'm sitting here very late in the night and I tried to make my brain work faster because I feel like it's slowly because it's so late. So I take it easy and yeah. If you want to follow me, you can follow me on, Insta on Instagram at pellasingle underscore real. And I will just start on reading my poetry before my brain totally falls asleep. My first poem is called Celebrity. The impossible love, always falling in empty love, scratches my sacred heart. Falling in love with a celebrity as a cure, so I'm blind in the radius, full of attractive guys I can't get. Falling, falling in love with a celebrity, love has too many abstract roads. Broken emotional highway drive, drives me crazy. Falling in love with a celebrity as a cure. Creating a love life like a movie script in my head. Love wipes from a script, creates love wipes too. Creates precious wipes. So I don't care about my surroundings. Falling in love with a celebrity. So I'm blind in the radius, full of attractive guys I can't get. And this poem is called Fingerprints. Let your fingerprints paint the way you want, creating the silhouette of who you are. Listen to your fingerprints, creating your music and lyrics. Let the fingerprints play the songs of who you are. Don't let other fingerprints kill who you are. Don't let other fingerprints erasing your words. Don't let, so sorry. The words that create who you are. Don't let other fingerprints editing your life the way you wanna live. Don't let other fingerprints turn your skyscraper potential into dusty rubbles in the dusk. Let your personality shine above the world. And I have a poem more, but I just need a little bit water. And the last poem is called Weightless, weightless. I'm flying through my soul together with torn veins, together with bone powder dust. Weightless through the forest of lost love, stuck forever in the forest of lost love. Weightless, I'm flying through a rubble storm, fragments of sharp bricks scratching. That's why my skin is covered by so many scars. Fingerprints of soaked feelings, feelings rolling like dominoes, lifeguards of divine oxygen, lifelines in lighthouse lights. Keep on fighting, keep on breathing. Thank you so much. Let's go. Yes, put your mic scan for Pell, please. Yes, so good, loved it. Yes. All right. Just a reminder, please drop, if you want, drop your socials in the chat. Please like, share, subscribe, follow each other, and um, let's keep going. Robert F., you are next, followed by Jacob R. Moses, Moses and Edith Blackard is in three. Good evening. I'm Robert Fleming, a word artist from Delaware. Um, would I be able to share the screen? Thank you. Um, I wanted to share one of... Um, my proudest moments as a gay man writer. Um, starting about 10 years ago, I started doing crossover publications in the publisher Local Gems, where I publish uh, writing about gay and transgender people, about their identity and their love interests. And I'm gonna share the two poems in this anthology, the first one is called Uncut. Folded in pleats, 
crease like silk crepe paper, seam so crunched together. Soon blood will pull out a cloud, which yearns for sky like water yearns to fall on white rocks. And I will share the other one, which is um, about drag. What is drag poetry? Drag poetry is revival, a testimony to healing that requires wigs, heels, bulges, and beards. Drag poetry is fashion, a rainbow accessory for any runway that requires good taste and execution. Drag poetry is writing, a tucking arrangement of words that requires Mike reciting on stage. Drag poetry is love, a celebration of identity that requires repeating, I am fabulous. And I'd like to um, show my gratitude for uh, publishers, um, including Red or Green Books, Marissa, and another publisher, um, the publisher of Ethel Magazine, um, that published my word art last year, and it was nominated for a Pushcart magazine, a Pushcart award. It's called After the Seventh Day. On the eighth day, God created a gay man out of love for Adam. On the ninth day, God created a lesbian out of love for Eve. On the 10th day, God got a makeover and Satan created society and illness out of hate for God, damn, and Eve. Greetings from Delaware and uh, thank you for including me in the anthology. Awesome. Thank you so much, Robert F. Y'all unmute your mics. Give it up for Robert F. Robert Fleming, Woo everyone. Woo yeah. All right. We're going to keep rocking and rolling this old train tonight. Lots of poets to get to. We got uh, Jacob R. Moses is next, followed by Edith Blackbird. You're on deck. Joshua Kernia, you are three. Hello, everybody. Hello from the forgotten borough of New York City, Staten Island. Also the most homophobic borough of New York City. So before I read my poem, I want to share that I do have a book. It is called, let me just get it in front of me here, Grimoire. Grimoire, fancy term for a spell book. It is available on all the major book retailers, Barnes and Noble, Amazon is available as an ebook. But one thing is for certain, I will get started with the poem that I am going to read. It is inspired by someone I knew who after the Supreme Court ruling legalizing gay marriage posted a photo of a burning rainbow flag. It inspired my, uh, Let's just say I kind of have like a spirit snack food and that snack food is a pretzel because when I hear this type of shit, I get salty and twisted. So this is called Rainbow Arson. Also, I should mention that my real last name is Friedman. I see the name Lee Eric Friedman there. So I just want to say it's awesome to see somebody who has my last name spelled the exact same way. So big up for that. Big up for that. You burn my rainbow because you are jealous that you only see black and white. No tinted windows, no calm tone, just a lot of shade throne as I wish I could kiss a man without the threat of kissing a 
fist. Amid the hateful rhetoric regurgitated by the KKK and the WBC, we can thank God we are not dead soldiers. Rainbows embody tolerance, and maybe then you will get this leprechaun's gold, and I won't see red as you become that green-eyed monster. So fuck your quartet of horsemen, as my revelation of your bigotry is what will make me raise hell. But maybe it need not be raised. For virtue burns every day with every violent act in the name of God, and in that vein, peace must reign. Put your hand in the hand of the man who stilled the waters. Put your hand in the hand of the man who come to see you at 53 Christopher Street, home of the Stonewall Inn, home of a landmark battle cry, home of a landmark rebellion, home of a landmark. See you in San Francisco where Harvey Milk was assassinated. See you in Laramie where Matthew Shepard was beaten and left to die. See you at the George Washington Bridge where Tyler Clemente jumped. See you in Orlando where 49 people were shot at Pulse. See you at Chechnya where gay men only exist in prison camps. And let me tell you folks, these are not talking points. These are human beings. And I'll be damned if you say otherwise. And I'll be double damned if you believe I will burn for all eternity and I'll be triple damned if you believe that I should burn here on earth and I'll be infinitely damned. If you feel your hatred disguises piety will lead you to the promised land and it's easy to cause shenanigans when lava drips from your mouth. So burn my rainbow if you wish, but it is resilient and the ashes of our LGBTQ ancestors retain the color of every single gray. And you may think your faith glitters, but damn it, sure as hell ain't gold. Thank you. Oh, you guys are beautiful. Oh, oh, thank you, thank you. So good. So thank you. thank you, everybody. Grimoire available on all major book platforms. Amazon is only available in ebook format, but Barnes and Noble and every other place, it's available for purchase. Big up to Two I Publishing, the people who put together my book. Two I spelt with two lowercase eyes. Thank you. Oh, I love it. Yes, please buy books. Please do that. If you have books, let me know. Uh, every Friday, I do a Feel Good Friday show on IG where I read exclusively books from other authors, uh, certainly outside of the press. So I, if you have a book, you uh, uh, either want a book swap or I'll get your book from you, uh, please let me know. Uh, I love pushing up the poets in, in the community. And that being said, if you have not published a book yet, a collection of poetry and you want to, I'm assembling my 2023 list. Uh, so reach out to me, let me know. All right, we're gonna keep rocking and rolling. Oh, this next woman. Mi corazón. Y de Blackbird, está aquí en la casa. Por favor, dame todo que tú tienes. Oh, hermosa. Oh, yeah. Go, Edith Blackbird is here, y'all. After Edith, we got Joshua Kernia, you're on deck. Rusty's having a hard time getting in. That means generally, Simone, Brian Fraco, you are in three. Wait, I can't hear you. I can't hear you. Oh, uh, can you? Yeah. yeah. Oh, thank you. Oh, it's just like so oh, I, I was saying that thank you so much for, for hosting and thank you for being such a wonderful editor. This is my second collaboration with you. And Elizabeth, thank you so much also for uh, giving us this chance and opportunity to share not only in that book, but also in this space um, and promote our work, our art everywhere. Thank you for uh, both of you and Shane for the cover. So I have a couple of poems. Uh, one of them is called in Spanish, I'm sorry, ASL interpre interpreters, but <laughs> this is Spanish. Uh, 
um, which is called in Spanish, um, Espero Curarme de Ti. And this is a poem from Jaime Sabines, a Mexican poet who passed away a long time ago. And I dedicate this one to one person who dies uh, in my community here in Austin. And uh, he was uh, recently died a few days ago and, and still, this is his favorite poem. That's why I'm reading this one. And then Machorra, which is another poem. Okay, so go. Can, can I uh, use music, Marisa? Yeah? Okay. Can you hear the music and my voice as well? Yes. Okay, thank you so much. So this is called Espero curarme de ti. I hope to be cured of you. One of these days, maybe I have to quit smoking you, drinking you thinking of you it's possible maybe following the moral guidelines of our times i prescribe myself time oh abstinence solitude would you mind if i love you for only one week it's neither too much uh, nor too little it's just <laughs> it's just plenty in a week, one can gather up all the words of love that have ever been tired and seen them blaze. I'm going to ignite you with this bonfire of burnt out love and just silence too. Because the finest words of love are between two people who say nothing. We will have to burn this other lateral and subversive language of the lover as well. You know, <laughs> I am really ready to tell you, I hope you understand when I say, it's getting hot. Give me water. Do you have, you, do you know how to drive? Night has fallen. Among the people in the midst of your folks and my, I have to say to you, it is late and you knew that I was just saying, I love you, I do. One week more to gather up all the love of time to give it up to you, everything, so you can do whatever you want with it. Yeah, 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 just take it all, keep it, caress it. Throw it away if you want to. It serves no purpose that much is certain. I only want one more week to figure things out. Because this is a lot like, ah, leaving a lunatic asylum to enter a graveyard. Thank you so much. So my second poem, really quick, change a little bit of tone in this case. This is called Machorra, and Machorra is a um, kind of a um, um, rude word to say to a person who is lesbian. It's called like a, a certain way, it's like macho pretender kind of translation in Spanish. Uh, and I used to be called that way when I was a kid. So hope you enjoy this one. I just sing, jump, hide, and run, surrounded by cobwebs and broken dolls, arms off, flying over the water tongues, poking the dawn. I'm a girl, a boy, and much, much, much more. Captain of my paper chip at the sea, queen of my sand castle at Pinito's Beach. Hi, hey, hey, come here. Call me Alicia, Damian, but not Norma, por favor. Norma is for well-behaved, and they say, well, nah, I am not. See, I have the best grades. Not enough. Look, I clean the, ca the classroom, de veritas, de veritas, not enough. I help abuelita in the kitchen, so, ¿qué no hago yo? Mejor 
take the water out of my body, awakening al cohete love. Hug me when my teddy bear feels alone. Tell me I'm good, I'm useful, I'm somebody. Because church people, yes, those ones, point at me, at me, at me, at me, teachers, family, and you, ya te vi. So what's about with who I want to be? I want to get in the mud and scrape my knees, climb trees with my beaten jeans without being told, no, 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 this isn't for chicks. I want to be a trucker or play with my compass soccer, eat with bare hands a full meal, feel okay not knowing how to wear heels or hear religion's reasons without feeling guilty of a punch of guilt. I love mis compañeritas, their eyes and risos Tea time, a recess, their hands so tender and not be called, hey, machorra, or macho pretender. <sighs> but I, I'm a girl, you know, a boy and much, 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 much more. Freddy Krueger in Culiacan Street playing with my vecinitos, hide and seek. My, I'm G.I. Joe, a space girl, I'm doctor of everything. Call me maybe Tatiana, Barney, mm, but not Norma, por favor, no. Norma is for good kids and I'm so much more. I have the best hugs when you cry. I clean and decorate my abuelita's graveyard. I fed the stray dogs and cats every night. Hey teachers, family, and you, please, just please let me be. As fluid as the sea, the captain, the trucker, the queen, G.I. Joe, Spice Girl, Doctor, and me, and more, yo. Awaken it again, al love. Because I don't see what's bad in me at all. Just don't ask for Norma, no. Ask for it. Is. Thank you so much, everyone. Oh my God, you guys, Edith Blackbird. Oh, if you've not been to Lenguas, please go to Lenguas. I'm sure uh, she'll drop all of her handles in the chat. Lenguas is an incredible, uh, oh, an incredible space to go and uh, share your spoken word. And she's just incredible. And I just heart her so much. <gasps> ah! Oh, let's go. I love that I get to work with all of these wonderful people who are just, they just fill my life um, and my heart. So thank you so much, Edith. Gracias por todo. I need to come see you. We need to, we need to, uh, Tejas, <laughs> uh, Tejas muy pronto, yeah. Ayer. <laughs> All right, Joshua, Cournia, you are next. After Joshua, we have uh, Generalissimo, Brian Franco, and then we have Star Child, if Star Child is in the house I did not see Star Child enter, so if Star Child is not here, uh, then we will have uh, Roxanne Hahn if she's here. Uh, yeah, oh, Roxanne, you're here. And I do apologize if I am using pronouns that are not yours. Uh, if uh, if you would like your pronouns uh, to uh, be uh, with your name, please uh, update that, and I will be able to. Uh, I will be able to use those if I'm misusing them. I do apologize. All right, Joshua, are you ready? I am. Um, I just want to say thank you so much to Elizabeth and Marissa for providing this space. And yeah, this wouldn't be possible if it's not because of you two. So thank you. Thank you so much. Um, I've been kind of in hiatus from poetry for quite a bit, but uh, this poem, it's actually the first poem that I wrote when I first came out a few years ago. And the reason that I actually got into poetry was because of my coming out and then, you know, I just got into it. So um, this poem is called, and this is the one that's going to be in the anthology as well. It's called Through the Dark Valley and Across the Rainbow Bridge. I wonder how it feels to fall in love to have butterflies swirling on top of my head as Cupid successfully hits his arrow to the bullseye of my heart, to have someone wrap their hands around my hands as we doze off to dreamland, to have a shoulder to cry, to have a companion to fly, to have a second half filling this void, 
A void I had struggled with for too long, needing to fill, meaning to cover, yet I kept drowning deeper and deeper into the abyss with self-conscious lies, toxic denial, and dishonesty to the world as I stayed hidden in this weird hide-and-seek game. I know it's not a choice. I know it would sting like poison ivies, a rose full of thorns. I know I'm breaking these molded thrones. I know it's not the real me, but rather a fake shade of me. I wanted the world to see. I know, I know, but do I? When the world tells me it's a shame I should never proclaim, when the world judges me like I'm on a million dollar trial, when the world never shows representation of who I aspire to be, and when the world fails my every expectation, how I see me, love still wins. Love finds its way through the slither of light that is barely left open, shining warmth to my hibernating heart. Love prevails and overwhelms me with deep, hidden emotions and desires. Love stands true to who I have been since the day I was born and who I am destined to be. Love is redefined with authentic honesty, no labels, no judgment, and no terms and conditions. This is me, me on a pilgrim of finding the elusive love, a work in progress hollow tinfoil robot but who is full of life and so ready to spill over and to give, to spread, and to receive, and to explode with the colorfully abundant, warm, fuzzy love from every nook and corner and inches of my being. I am on a journey, a journey to grab that love I have always so desired, yet so hard to reach from the endless labyrinth of self-loathing and the bondage of the shadow, through the bottom of the dark valley and across the rainbow bridge, I emerge to freedom like a blackbird taking flight into the deep blue blank canvas next to a proudly waving flag that says love always wins. Thank you. Oh, I love it. Oh, Joshua, Kearney, are you all on mute your mics, please? And, uh, yeah. and share some love, Joshua. Um, that was amazing. I'm so excited yeah. to see you this week. I loved it. it. <laughs> Let's go. Oh, man. I, 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 we need a Bay Area uh, field trip. I'm just, I'm not saying, I'm just saying, right? We're going to be in New York City in September for the New York City Poetry Festival. Uh, we're going to be releasing the anthology there. I believe we have over 30 poets signed up to read on those two days, including some in this very room. If you are interested in reading at our booth for Red or Green Books, let me put that on my list of things to announce from time to time. Um, if you're interested in reading at the booth for Red or Green Books uh, for this anthology, you're, you're welcome to do so. I did send the links out. It is in a Google um docs spreadsheet so you just find the times that are available and sign up if all the times are taken you can still come and see if someone is unable to make it who signed up uh, we can get you in not to worry all right let's go uh it is not stopping this trend is not stopping today we have generalissimo brian franco who i'm just i'm so excited about because not only is he my twin right and this time, next Saturday, is our Roast or Toast the Host event for our birthday party. Because <laughs> I tried to swallow him in the womb, apparently. Uh, the story changes every time he tells it, but it's wonderful. Uh, but he is part of the next 10 poets uh, who we published from Red or Green Books. His incredible book, uh, Everything I Think is All in My Mind, was uh, one that we published. For yes, Lee Eric Friedman has your, has your book there, G. Uh, and now he is a part of this lovely anthology and also submitted for the gun violence anthology. I'm so honored and blessed to call him my twin. Uh, Generalismo, you're up. Star Child is not in the room. So Roxanne, you are on deck. Well, I just want to say, first of all, Lee Eric Friedman is such an amazing poet. Everyone has something to look forward to. Joshua, you never cease to amaze me with your talent. You are so expressive with your words i'm i'm just really proud every time that i hear you um oh edith thank you so you, much general you could cure me of my homosexuality if it was <laughs> if that was possible because you are just the most beautiful person around oh everyone's a beautiful person but you know you're 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 just something else that you and i'm like 
I love every, but anyways, let me let me read two poems. The first is the one that is in the anthology. It's called "When a Kiss Feels Like Like It Exists in a Movie." You leaned in to kiss me, and somehow our noses didn't crash into each other. Somehow, the way your lower lip and upper lip managed to grab and release my lower lip and seemed as if a famous movie director had choreographed our first kiss. I felt my heart beating against the Pima cotton blue and white striped polo dress shirt I wore beneath a red cashmere sweater. Your hand was on my shoulder and you rubbed it across my barely there 20 year old chest and commented in a soft voice, mm, I love the feel of cashmere. Then you wrapped your 23 year old arms around me as you pressed your soft lips against mine and time stood still. I felt your hands travel down my back, then you stepped away and smiled at me and said, if you wanna stay a little longer, you can. You were older than me, and my only other experience with a guy was this guy in front of me in line at a grocery store with whom I had an innocuous small talk conversation, who then walked up to me after I got to my car. He was gorgeous with perfect hairy runner's legs. He started a conversation as I put my groceries in the trunk. I hope I'm not wrong, but I don't live far from here if, if you wanna come by. I didn't realize we were flirting with each other by simply having a conversation. We started kissing at his place and he was overzealous with his tongue, which I, which I wasn't too fond of, but it didn't take long for two skinny college boys to find their way to naked. Every touch from his fingertips and hand felt like my body was custom made for him. It was as if he was made of electricity. He was my first. There were things I needed to learn. He became my tutor. I was a willing student. We'd meet once or twice a week at his place, which lasted for about two months. We'd always get naked within a few minutes of my arriving and stay undressed my entire visit as if we were nudists. I bought Paul Young's Secret of Association. I put the cassette in his stereo system on side two. The first song was, I want to tear your playhouse down. The whole side two was a soundtrack for a sex romp. I think we cared for each other, but it was the eighties. We were closeted and there was no chance of us continuing without blowing up our lives. When you and I met, you were a grad assistant to a professor. I made an appointment with you to help me with something I didn't understand. Afterward, you suggested we grab some dinner sometime. Again, another time I didn't realize I was flirting. I could definitely feel my heart beating against my preppy knit shirt as I sat across, as I sat opposite your desk. And when you took me out to that healthy food restaurant and paid the bill, I was too naive to realize we were on a date. It was a breezy, cool, early spring Florida evening. You suggested we take a walk in a small nearby park. You asked me if you could kiss me beneath a blooming magnolia tree. It was a soft, gentle kiss, but felt more passionate than any kiss my previous sort of not boyfriend had planted on me. You asked me to follow you back to your place, which I didn't hesitate to do. You were never overzealous with your tongue or a sloppy kisser. Our secret six-month tryst laid the groundwork for how I learned to treat future romantic partners with respect. You never pushed me to do things I didn't want to do. We had stopped seeing each other by November and you finished your graduate degree shortly after then moved across the country. It should have broken my heart and sent me into a severe depression, but you had taught me I was capable of eventually having a real relationship with another man, even though it wouldn't take me several years till I moved to New York City in 93 and live as, to live as an out gay man and have a full-fledged relationship. I don't think we were in love, though I might have thought we were. We both lived separate lives out outside of us grocery store guy was more of a dalliance the sort the start of a new learning curve what we were was much more than that even though it was just a secret and we never talked we never met or talked again it felt as if our story was a series of vignettes and a movie directed by a not yet famous director before his first film would change the life of a closeted gay 20 year old college kid desperately in need of the kind of knowledge and experience to recognize his true self and live a full life and I'll do one more poem, which is called, It Happened on the Number Two. It happened when we met. It's true what they say. New York City public transit is one hell of a matchmaker and a place where everything's moving so fast all the time. It's the only time anyone can stand still while they're still moving. 
you got on the number two downtown bus one or two stops after me. It was a hot, humid day. Every seat was taken. You stomped down the aisles in your scuba diver flippers, announcing to everyone you deserved their seat. I was reading the comics. You rudely elbowed my shoulder as you grabbed the cold steel bar above my head so you could stand still while the bus moved. I looked up and said, excuse me. You looked down at me and said, excuse you. At, and over two miles later, after we both exited at the same stop, no less, we were exchanging digits. And despite that, I thought you were way out of my league. You asked for my number first and even called me first. On our first date, we went to that place on 7th and A with the narrow, steep staircase leading to a loft space with exposed brick walls, a long pockmarked antique oak bar, and floor to ceiling window overlooking Avenue A in Thompson Square Park. You opened the wine list. You put your finger on a Chilean Shiraz. You said, you'll love this. I'm a bit of an onophile. I was duly unimpressed. After dinner, you led the way to a bar. We walked down Avenue A, about halfway down Ninth. there it was. Everything was gold. The ceiling was gold, the floor was gold, the walls were gold, the bar was gold, the upholstery on the stools was gold, the art on the walls was, was pan canvases painted gold with frames painted gold. I was blinded by all that gold. I was blinded by your words. I was blinded by the way you talked to me. I was blinded by the way you looked straight through me. And I am not ashamed about what happened on the cab back to your place. My place was a glorified walk-in closet on the fourth floor of a five-floor walk-up with a crazy old lady, redheaded super, who smoked in the halls, whose son lived across the hall from me. So every time I opened my door, I'd hear, Kenny, is that you? Your place was a high-rise with a marble lobby with marble floors, marble walls, and a marble desk for the doorman who looked like a middle-aged Ralph Lauren model. When I finally met your roommate, the bleach blonde nurse with the Baywatch body, Demi Moore voice, and Mae West sense of humor, we were in bed. She walked into your room, introduced herself, and stayed for a few minutes to tell us about her day. After she left, she, you said, I think she's your type. She's everyone's type. I licked my lips and gave you a sloppy wet kiss on your two-day stubble cheek that both tickled and scratched my lips. You gave me a sweet, soft, romantic kiss on the lips back. And despite the inordinate amount of time we spent in bed, the best part of everything was that there was never a time we weren't talking. We were talking even when we weren't talking. There were no awkward pauses. We listened to each other. We learned from each other and we taught each other. There was music, movies, theater in New York City. It was something I hadn't experienced in my 27 years of existence and have yet to experience in the 25 years since. Now we live close to 2,500 miles away from each other and haven't met in 23 years. We talk at least once a month. We can tell each other anything and expect the kind of respect and honesty that rarely happens in today's indispensable cell phone, Facebook fueled Fox News, fake news world. The last time we hung up, I realized in over 29 years, I have never met someone who gave me the jolt you gave me when we first met. You know, when you meet someone, you take this deep breath, you can't release until that person is 100% out of your sight. And I'll admit, I've stood naked and God only knows how many thunderstorms holding a lightning rod, Statue of Liberty style, and have been struck by lightning. God only knows how many times. But in my lifetime, I have only received one jolt. Gracias, everyone. And thank you, Marissa. Thank you so much, Lizzie. Um, what a special, special thing this book is, and what a special thing um, we all get to be part of this wonderful community. Oh, thank you, Generalissimo Brian Franco. Oh, he hosts the first and third Monday of the month, uh, Cafe Generalissimo uh, on, on the Word is Right Facebook page. So we're so excited for you. Thank you, Generalissimo, so much. All right, uh, a quick housekeeping change for those who are just joining us. Um, Christopher Moore is spotlighting features. He will spotlight the feature, and then he will spotlight the ASL interpreter, whoever is uh, going to be up uh, to help us. That way we have uh, two spotlighted 
uh, readers today for you. And I, I thank you so much for the feedback. Uh, we want to do this 100% uh, the right way. We are not above um, helping move things along the right way. So thank you, Generalissimo, so much. Drop your stuff in the chat. Uh, Rita Rusty Rose made it into the room, which I am so excited about. She is here, y'all. Uh, so we will have- uh Rusty! Yeah, Rusty! <laughs> She's the one with my life. <laughs> yes, Elizabeth. Hello, everyone. Hero. Rusty is my hero. Mar Marissa. She's a lot of people's heroes. Y'all don't know what you don't know yet, but she will once she reads. So we will have Roxanne Rocky Hoffman uh, come up and read. I'm so excited to meet everybody face to face. It, it's been a long time coming. I've been looking at everyone's names for a while and reading their work. And 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 I see uh, sometimes those of you who have submitted photos. I've seen your photos, but to have you here in person, it, it really is um, just so lovely. Uh, if you're just joining us, you'd like to get a copy of the book and you do not have an author present here, one of the contributors to buy a book from, uh, please go to the website and do that. I put the uh, coupon code in the chat. Uh, I am not going to um, announce the coupon code because uh, you have to be in the Zoom room for it. It is for $10 off the book. Uh, I am encouraging everyone, if you know one of the contributors, please get it from them because I would rather the, uh, the contributors be able to make the money uh, that is how we set this up. Uh, but I will tell you that the sales of this book are going to fund the gun violence anthology. The sale of the women's erotic anthology helped fund the launch of this book. Uh, so we are, are, are using um, project over project over project. <laughs> Uh, the funding to be to the next project and with having a, a hundred contributors for the gun violence anthology we are going to have to do more than one book and so we need funds and we need money to do that if anyone is interested in helping sponsor us or sponsor a project on that please let me know uh, we're just a small press but you know what we're we're bananas to the wall uh, hard up into this. So let's go. Um, and if you have not been to the website yet, redbooks.com, red is R-E-A-D. And I sign a little bit. Like I used to sign in, in elementary school. I signed a little bit in, in college. I sign a little bit, but I don't sign nearly as proficiently as I used to. So big shout out to our ASL and being here. And if, if there's something I can do to pay it forward to you, uh, please let me know. And at Red or Green Books, and the word is right, we, uh, I will put a spe a specifically a care packet together for you too. Thank you so much for your love and support uh, in being here today. All right, so Rocky, are you ready? Roxanne, Rocky Hoffman's in the house. And then we'll go Rita, Rusty Rose, and then we'll bring up Patricia Carrigan because Rusty was supposed to be earlier in the lineup. So we'll bring her up and, uh, and then we'll keep going uh, tonight. Are you ready, Roxanne? Yes. yes. Yeah, I'm ready. <laughs> Great to be here. I'm just enjoying this reading. So um, I'm going to read the two poems from the book. And the first one's called Prenuptials. And, um, and the second one is called Bliss. So let, I'm just gonna read. Prenuptials, to wear on your eyes. You are the purple shag carpet under my feet. Swear on your eyes. You are the guiding, flickering fluorescent above. Swear on your eyes. I, the endowment do, the trust your parents would not provide all debts paid in full, including the student loans. Your trump card, get out of jail free. We will bail each other out and commit perjury. Don't worry, it's legal, we're spouses. Of course, he was at my place all night and no kidding, we did not sleep. I am parked in place, Mr. Coney Island Boardwalk. You have the monopoly on my No matter how the draw, no ching, you get to keep all your hotels and I get to keep all of mine. We swear on our eyes, take turns placing palms on the Merriam Webster Dictionary New Edition. And after that, giddy and giggling, we brave. Whatever we make from now on, love, money, 
babies, et cetera, et cetera. We agree to share equally. Cut that mushroom quiche right down the middle, please. You call that even? Looks a bit crooked to me. Sorry, you better do the cutting. Nah, we'll take turns. I, Mother Teresa, fairy godmother and sugar daddy all rolled. See, you swallow whole like Eucharist. Love and do you. Father, son, and now the Holy Ghost. We each sign on the dotted line and in blood from pinpricked fingers sterilized with gin. The champagne cork pops. We toast la chem to life, then get mad drunk on love and Manischewitz and lick each other's wounds. Bliss. Agile bodies cuddle, dance. Eager fingers guide hearts, interrogate jutting knees. Love mounts nestled offerings, plucks quivering breeze, slipped tightly under vibrating wings, exed and owed, yesing zealously. So those are my two poems in the book, and I hope that everybody is getting many, many copies. I've ordered a couple to start, and I think I'm going to order some more. I'm thoroughly psyched about this book. And I also have a small press. It's called Poets Wear Prada. And right now we have an open call for our anthology, which is called The Rainbow Project. I will put some information in the chat so you can check it out. We're now looking for poems on the color red. And, um, and I also about Brownstone Poets, which is coming up at the end of this month. Oh, a yes! Shout out Let's, I'm sorry, Rocky, go ahead. To, to Marissa, <laughs> Elizabeth, Shane, and everybody, the 100 poets that are in this book. I'm so excited. I'm thrilled. Oh, it's so much fun, right? It's, it's, it's awesome. Uh, thank you all so very much. Uh, let me see if I can. No, I, I don't want to spotlight myself. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't know how to do this. I'm not super great at this. Uh, remove spotlight. Okay, there we go. Uh, it, it's hard because I have Chromebook and the Chromebook doesn't show me what the PC shows me. All right. Uh, yes, Rocky Hoffman, please put that stuff in the chat. Uh, I will I will submit to that. If I don't have something red, maybe I'll do it red, R-E-A-D. <laughs> Just to be funny. All right. Uh, but yes, please, the pose wear, pro uh, pose wear Prada, like, I saw that. I remember Rocky seeing that. And Prada is my real last name, by the way. It's not a make. It's not a made up thing. Uh, a lot of a lot of people ask me about that. No, it's my real last name. Uh, it's not some fancy schmancy stuff. Uh, but Rocky, yes, I will definitely uh, hit you up for that. Whatever we can do to help support, promote what you guys got, let us know. We'll go there. Um, Rita Rusty Rose is in the house. <laughs> let me just say that again. Rita Rusty Rose is in the house. She's going to read next. Yes. You are yeah. on deck. Uh, Donna Snyder, unfortunately, is, is very um, ill and she's unable to join us. So if you could please um, send her some healing energy, some love. Um, she really could use all the prayers that we have for her right now, uh, which leaves Michael, James, Haley. You will be in three. So you're good, Rusty, whenever you want to start. Yes, we're just sending those prayers out. Okay, I just want to say that um, a special thanks to Mar Marissa and Elizabeth and all of you who are here to celebrate out loud. You know, we have a lot of adversity today, and it reminds me of going back to the 1960s to a time when I fought for our civil freedoms, LGBTQ freedoms. And uh, I'm so proud of all of you that in this face of adversity, you have remained visible and vigilant and true to yourselves. So we're going to go on with the celebration and I'm going to read the two poems that are in out loud. And the first one is a back when we used to have separate bars, lesbians in one bar, gays in another. And unfortunately, the transgender community were lumped in 
with the, um, the cross dresses. It, that's it. And so this is about a, a true um, piece about a bar on Long Island and it's called South Broom. It is Monday, 10 p.m. I sit on a black wooden stool in a lesbian bar far away from the nuances and predictabilities of the heterosexual world. And I am thinking about us when times were happier. Now passions are now quashed, but I continue to think. My thoughts keep flashing like a constant pressure upon a shutter, a long play in wreckage stuck in a groove. They keep skipping and droning. Do you remember when? And I wash down these images with cola. Some taste sugary, some are bubbly, and some sting the delicate lining of my throat. Love is off like that, sweet when it's found, sour as when it's gone bad, bitter as when it's lost, and my visions of you dissipate. The indigo girls blare from the jukebox. They are singing, there is life down below me. I think about the verse as pool sticks and stools are pushed aside and couples are hurrying to the already crowded dance floor. A stone butch in a green and white striped shirt saunters towards me, gently stretching a hand in my direction. She is the reminder of why I am so proud to be the dyke that I am. She is proof love exists. Love, when it finds me, will take me home. It is Monday, 10 p.m. I sit on a black wooden stool. And the next poem is a poem that I wrote for a friend, again, out of experience. And I spent many summers uh, at the Pines in a cherry grove. And this is a little story uh, about um, my friend, and it's called Call Her Franco. Woman to woman, as we danced, you held me in your thick set arms, honeyed sweet maize, your scent wafted from the nape of your neck, the bold essence of you emanating to catch its prey, the zenith of attraction too mighty to deny. Woman to woman, throughout the night, possessive blue aguave eyes sit me as if Patron, catches of my imagination, controllers of my every whirl. And I fervently searched your face, captivated as you stared, wordless, your eyes spoke to me. And what is revealed, what I could be seen in their fullness, was an abstraction of a man, blinded by the glare of a new sunrise, and terrified he would not be accepted. Woman to woman, the brawny of your body declared it all. I was attentive to your hunger. Yet in my reverie, I failed to ask. And you, you held on to a secret you did not share. And enamored by our attraction, you could not see me or I you. And we pushed each other away. Wounded was our pride. Woman to woman. As we danced, our sensual bouquet eroded like thunderous breakers against the fire island shore. In every ebb and flow, every sunrise and sunset, the confusion, the push away from you, and time after time, frantically, like a hurried death, never revealing, always roaring dissatisfied within and still we collided along the coast of what could have been and woman to woman as we danced all became clear while you live by the sea the surf is so much like you dear friend or I should say and dare to say that you are the rolling sprays woman 
Oh, whoa, man. Hey, man, our chance has poured out the hourglass of life and grains of sand have trickled. They sit at the bottom of time. Time, the elusive force which binds and blinds the choice one makes. Woman to woman, sadness evokes my soul. The memories of when we swayed your handsome smile, the deep blue eyes and muscular build, the melodies of our bodies, a song which was fleeting. Woman, oh woman, would I do it again? Yes, if not for the pain our blending has caused, if only you, we, had given us a chance. If only we, you would have communicated. If only I could have told you just once. If only, if only, if only, woman to woman, as we danced, I suspected you were a trans man. Thank you, everyone. Oh, you guys, give it up for Rita, Rusty Rose, who is here today. Oh, my God. We're so excited to have you part of this incredible anthology. Rusty, we love you so much. Uh, you're such inspiration to many of us in the community. And we're fucking going to change the world. I promise you, we are not going to let all of what came before be for nothing. All right. We're gonna carry that torch, my friends, I promise. We gotta keep doing this, you guys, so that we got people coming up behind us carrying the torch as well. All right, next up, we got Patricia Carrigan is in the house. And then we have Michael James Haley. We're on deck after Michael James Haley is DG Cleary, you are in three. Hi, thank, thank you, Marissa. Thank you, Elizabeth, for getting me in the anthology, appreciate it. Let me rock it. I have two poems in the book and I'm gonna read two political poems because I gotta put the political in before I read. Okay, from the anthology. Will you love me tomorrow? Nikki in mid-cycle heat goes uptown to the Bronx east of the Grand Concourse. The Briggs Avenue walk up her downtown transfer. It's 90 plus degrees, the Bronx heat wave, no different from the one in Brooklyn, even hotter with Lena next to her. The fans circulate their body temperatures. They sit on a fire escape, mix conversation with beer and cannabis. Her flesh sizzles, rubs against hers, body odors mingle as one. Their hands explore beyond seams and buttonholes. The Shirelles sing on YouTube. Tonight, she's hers. But would she still love her when moonlight leaves by six? She spreads her legs, allows the flow to do what it wants. Unprotected lust can't hear the music, the words in her head, or the local calico crying below. Solitude. Solitude plays film noir, her haute couture wears despair like satin pumps. She is Marlene Dietrich, elegant black feathers cast a veil across her face. She walks beside me, extends in sunlight, moves inward at night. She is like me, can survive without your support. She sits beside me, explains that not all firestorms are alike, that dark rainbows come in various shades of lies and abuse. Billie Holiday sings a silent prayer for you to return. The womb's stillness collides with the one within, a storm brews between the past and present. Solitude argues with night and the gap between logic and absurdity makes this room smaller than it is. And now for political. We walk. We walk away from the sun with tongues cut, language extracted, hands immobilized. We walk in an absence of thought, cleanse our bodies and souls, whitewashed, void of color, diversity, orientation, spirituality, individuality, intelligence, and love. 
We walk with devout obedience inside a global maze, constructed without an exit. Abide sacred dress codes and behaviors. Never question divine laws that repealed justice. We walk on, never noticing the sun diminish into isolation, the universe distancing itself from intervention, or the rising walls of body bags inside this paradise lost. And my last one, I have to keep reading this, this is from 2018, the end of the world. In a dream, her parents' wedding photo burned slowly. Their ashen marriage vaporized in life and death. A grayish puddle formed a stain on the chest of drawers. She woke up and went about her day, listened to an old song, The End of the World. Depression read her tarot cards. A heart bled, pierced by three swords. A woman tied and blindfolded, surrounded by eight swords. A woman wept in bed, Nine swords hung above her wall. Her fertility walked in apparent shoes. The world didn't care if her life was going nowhere. The sun and stars went into hiding. Two morning doves stopped singing. Islands of plastic floated in the sea. Bad news kept recycling. The world still on suicide watch. On the news, there was another shooting. Children's hearts bled, pierced by three bullets. Justice tied and blindfolded, surrounded by eight white men. Mothers wept in their beds. Nine AR-15s hung above their walls. Futility walked in American-made shoes. Thank you so much. And I already posted in the in the chat room that uh, Brownstone Poets has a reading on Saturday, uh, July. June, uh, July the 30th, um, please step by. Uh, we have Alexandra Van Den Kamp, Thomas Fukuroa, and Mario J. Pagan Morales, who are gonna be the three features. Uh, information on Facebook, uh, uh, it's in the chat room, or you can DM me at pcaragon at gmail.com. I'm also the author of uh, um, Angel Fire, by from Alien Buddha Press, it's on Amazon as well as the Poets Fair Prada. I have two books from them. Thank you, Roxanne. Uh, the Cupcake Chronicles and Meowku is on Poets Fair Prada and it's on Amazon. And also, I got the latest Brownstone Poets Anthology to, uh, also on Amazon. Thank you, thank you, Elizabeth, and thank you, Marissa. Great. Oh meeting. my gosh, you, got you guys, give it up for Patricia. Get on today. Let's go. Oh, what a gorgeous reading, uh, Patricia. And I love it. More Prada. Let's let's get more Prada in the uh, in the world. Uh, yes, uh, post wear Prada is so much fun. Uh, I'm gonna submit to that. I'm gonna I'm gonna do. Yes, we'll do something. All right, let's keep going here tonight. We have next up on the mic, Michael James Haley, followed by DG Clearing. You're on deck, Nick Luis. You are in three. Hello, everyone. My name is Michael James Haley. Um, first off, I want to say thank you, Lizzie, for inviting me onto this project. And thank you, Marissa, for hosting this space for us and um, helping it uh, come to fruition. Um, I'm going to read a poem from um, the anthology, and then I'm going to read one not from the anthology. Um, you guys can find me on Instagram at Nomasbar. I do have a book coming out probably early next year. It's going to be called Clip. It's uh, my first um, poetry collection. It's going to be called Clipped Wings and other things that keep a bird from flying. If you follow me on Instagram, um, you will stay up to date. All right. Um, so the first poem is called War Has Never Been This Way. The Beautiful Things. Butterflies and songbirds aflutter by tulip blooms and willow trees, ever taking root in the soils of my mind, ever trapped in waging war against the counter tide, and beauty can draw blood. Willow ensnared by blackberry rose drawn by thorn and bramble, glinting mosaic from lunging serpents, ever lost in battles of their own, ever gripping too tightly, nearly impossible to hold on to themselves. War has never been this way. 
but hasn't it always? To the blown bulbs that kept us in darkness for lighting another path towards liberation. To the false faithful fires they burn in our yards, only tender to fuel the flames in our hearts, raise a glass. To those who disturbed by the warmth we can conduct even in their harshest winters. To the deep baritones and soul digging saxophones. To the hymns hummed on railroads, war has always been this way. For the delighted faith flittering about plum trees, living freely is a threat to our survival. So we douse our wings in glitter and flitter harder in protest, blinding with our brilliance, taunting miserable fools who bind themselves in chains, how they do envy us even of our oppression and the war wages on. All right, and that is the first one. And the uh, second poem is called Slip and Fall. Must be my sanity slipping that makes me think this is love. To play the part of fool again for you is enough to have me waiting in line for my chance to bring you proof that can no other hold you down like I can do. I'll always keep an empty hamper, clothes folded and ironed, and vow to cater to my man when he comes through the door tired. If we could only procreate, I'd name them Destiny's Child, guess all this wishful thinking just me in denial. But I'll put dinner on the table if you give me the label. More than friends until the end, that do us part and no fables. I want to curl up in your arms under the charm of your gray blues, those stormy skies and stormy eyes wear no disguise. Let me play you a song on fine strands of your silky brown hair. Close the space between our lips so we can breathe the same air. If you just said you felt the same, then that would only be fair but life's a bitch and never this so i don't care i don't care about the way your face lights up when you're acting a goon i'm only laughing at myself for being taken so soon it doesn't matter if you flatter me by batting those lashes every flutter leaves a gash like flogging lashes my repentance for the sin of flirty grins and glances under the brow so i would do it all again if i could be with you now so no, I haven't learned my lesson and I've fallen again, slip insanity making me love a friend between men. I slip and slick from the sick that you I slip and slick from the sick that you make me feel when you give me my faith in God, but insist that he isn't real. And when you give me feelings the world says I shouldn't feel, it's my sanity. I'm slipping in my sanity and sanity. I drive insanity when you gas up my vanity, holding out helping hands just to take them back, sends me tumbling, crumbling, spinning round. I'm such a bumbling fool. My mind is set to slip and wet and send me falling for you. I'm slipping, tripping, dripping tears and crippled from all the pain. You hold a light to all my fears and then you gas them with shame. It sends me real and still my heels are on the ceiling, my head in the ground repealing the truth of what you aren't feeling. These moments that I keep stealing, I'm collecting to keep trying some more. And when my sanity puddles up on the floor, I slip and fall. Thank you, everyone. Oh, man. Y'all unmute your mics, please. Give it up for Michael James Haley. Thanks, Michael. Thank you. Oh, yes, Michael. Yeah, that was great. Yeah. So good. Oh, Go my find God. that inspired word, NYC. Inspired word, NYC. That you heard Lizzie. At least I think that was Lizzie. Uh, the sound of uh, uh, Yes, uh, please follow all of these codes. Feel free to drop your socials in the chat. Um, let's let's go. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm working on a, a, a page on the website to have everyone's bio for this anthology. It will take me some time because there are a lot of contributors, but uh, I'm working slowly on that. So uh, please be patient. If you have not uh, yet gone to get your copy, you don't know someone who is uh, a contributor, number one, go get the copy from them because they'll sign it for you, right? They'll sign it, they'll love on it, they'll send it to you. Please buy a copy of this book from one of the contributors. It is so important that we get uh, these artists paid. If you don't know anyone, then please, uh, you can definitely get a copy of the book at the press, redorgreenbooks.com. All of the proceeds of this book are going to fund the gun and violence anthology titled American Graveyard. And a big shout out to Vexed Lex for that title. It is the namesake of her poem, which is in the book. Uh, the project is monumentally larger than we anticipated. <laughs> so uh, please help support this project so that we can continue supporting other projects down the road. All right, uh, and I will type the coupon code in the chat for those who would like to get the book. Uh, you have to be here in the Zoom room to get the $10 off the book and the first 50 get the rainbow envelope. So let's go. All right, next up we have DG Cleary, who I'm so excited about is a part of this anthology. Like I, you know, I, I wonder what his secret is because he's always number one at New Yo. 
and uh, he <laughs> so damn dapper, right? And I'm like, how does DG Clearing do it? And I thought maybe I would find out in this anthology, but no, he did not relinquish his secrets. So we still do not know how he does it. Uh, but DG Clearing, you are up next. Nick Luis, you are on deck. Eric Friedman. Oh, excuse me. Hold on. Nick Luis, you are on deck. Lee, Eric Friedman, you are in three. Hey everybody, I am DG Clearing. I get number one because it's in my rainbow. So, you know, you can find me. <laughs> it's true. You know, you can find me at DG Clearing online, uh, Instagram, Facebook, and other places. Just look up DG Clearing. It is an honor to be here. Thank you, Marissa. Thank you, Elizabeth, and everybody who has put all the hard work into this. Uh, the poets here are just incredible. I have one poem for you tonight. My first rainbow, when I was just a baby, I saw my first rainbow above my crib, hung in the sky with the sun and the moon and the stars. When I was three, I saw my first rainbow outside, hung in the sky with the raindrops, the clouds and the birds. That is when I drew my first band of colors with crayons. It hung on the fridge with a magnet alongside the other pictures of people and words. When I was seven, I made a rainbow with hearts of color on the sidewalk with chalk and imagined that it hung in the sky with my grandma who had just died. When I was 12 in my diary with the rainbow on the cover, I wrote about the colors of my dreams, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and purple, a band of colors that would always protect me. When I was 16, hid under my dresser drawer, I kept the secret of the rainbow, bound in my journal with notes and pictures inside. When I was 19, there was a person who shared their rainbow with me, with colors in their arc that I had never seen before. When I was 23, I played with all the colors, smearing them together like finger paints, making the modern art of my time. When I was 27, in the tablet of my keepings, I searched for the pot of gold at the end, of, at the rainbow's end. When I was 32, I stood inside the end of the rainbow and knew what I had written was true. It's all going to be okay. Thank you, everyone. So nice to read tonight. I appreciate it. Oh, man, you guys give it up for DG Clearing and his incredible reading tonight. Now, DG, we know that your other two colors are green and gold. They right? are, you know, I am in a kin with you. Uh, Packer season is just around the corner. I am so go excited. Pack, go. Uh, weeks, we, I'm, you know, I, I'm gonna have to get you to a game one day. Oh my God, yes, yeah. uh, please, before Aaron gets uh, retired or injured, knock on wood. Um, right, right, right. We don't have Devontae anymore, but I think we're okay. And we, we traded. Yeah, for we'll, we'll, we'll do fine. You know, yeah, they're, they're, they're hanging around Green Bay now. So everybody's kind of back. So oh, yeah. oh, see, August and September would be the best time to come see a game. Yeah. That, yeah. Cold yeah. I'll, I'll try to score a couple tickets this year and, and invite you up and, you know, hopefully you can get up for it. That would be awesome. Let's go. Yeah. If, if we poet, if we if we poet it, then that helps because then I can make it a business trip. <laughs> there, well, definitely poet. You're you're coming to visit a poet. So <laughs> <Yeah. definitely. laughs> 
DG yeah. will just take me sightseeing at a place called Lambo Field for the best. There, there we go. <laughs> Blessings, everybody. Right. Happy Thank Pride. You so much, DG. And don't think less of me if you're a Packer fan out there. I mean, if you're a Bear <laughs> fan out there or a 49er fan, we 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 got love for you still too. All Thank right, next up. Them. Next up, we have Nick Louise, and then we have Lee Eric Friedman, Cynthia Winfield. You are uh, three away. Hello, everyone. Hi, Marissa. Thank you so much for this. Elizabeth, my beanie boo. Thank you so much for asking me when she first asked me. I had so much butterflies in my stomach. I'm like, oh, my God. And then when I got it submitted, I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> so to be here, oh, my God. <laughs> Um, yeah, thank you so much, everyone. So far, so much inspiration, so much great words, gave me chills. I love being here. I feel a little rusty. I've been out of the performance game a little bit. So this is my way of coming back. This is my comeback. <laughs> um, so I'm going to read my piece from the series. It's called Unapologetically. <clears throat> I was by the table at 16 years old. I sat my mother down because she needed to be told. Love me for me, for I like boys, a reason I played with my sister's toys. She said, Poppy, I will always do, but I want you to love you too. From that moment on, I knew it was the journey, taking a deep breath and counting. One, two, three. Who am I? What am I doing? Is this me? Can it be? I had to go searching for my inner core so I could be me now and forevermore. In the moment of speeching voices in my ear screaming, what do you want? And declaring, I'm gay, is something I had to hear. Today you see me, who me, yes me, Latinx, Puerto Rican, Black, gay, bear, queen, queer. Yes, I'm here. Everywhere around me, society screaming, men don't cry, men don't feel, men don't wear makeup or high heels. Painted nails, ponytail wigs, I can touch and also fuck. Probably better than most, but here, I'll give you some leprechaun's luck. Are you masculine or feminine? Why, when no one asks for your opinion? Better try again, because it's not about being a man or a woman, but about releasing your inner fierceness. I'm a witch, bitch. I'm here to spread the love, the light, and fight against all those who oppress us into the night by creating art from the heart peace, equality, tranquility, conversation, intuition, premonition of what the world should be like, for it needs more righteousness, fellowship, friendship, compassion, empathy, growth, truth. Your truth shall set you free, but it begins with you. Being you is the greatest success you'll have in life. Life was not given to tear each other down because we have our own worthy crowns. You can make a difference. You can be the change you want to see. You can be the peace in the world. No one has the right to tell you who you are or who you need to be just because the faith you believe in that gives you purpose or the person you fuck in your bed or the color of your skin for the things that make you you or for the things that make you happy. No one has the right to take just because they can. No one has the right to kill, including those who were sworn to protect us. Another human being, Black, trans, LGBT, queer, women, disabled, mental and physical, pain, pen, a, demi, omni, sabiosexual, and the list goes on and on until we scream, we push, we fight, and we stand up for today. We say, how dare you? How dare you? Be safe, be still, be proud, be you unapologetically. Oh, what an anthem! So good, what thank you. Y'all unmute your mics, please get up for Nick Luis. Thank Fantastic. you, everyone. I appreciate it. So <laughs> oh. Thank you. My social stuff on chat, you guys can follow me on Instagram. I'm probably going to try to post more poetry on Instagram. So, yeah. But thank you. Thank you for the space. Yes, please do. And like I said, I'm putting together my 2023 inaugural, like the not inaugural, a debut book launch. So if you've never put a book of poetry out and you're interested in doing so, reach out to me, marissa at redergreenbooks.com. Red is R-E-A-D. And I will put you on my 2023 list uh, for publication. Uh, let's go. And uh, after tonight, I'm thinking we need another, <laughs> we need another out loud. <laughs> because we have Lear Friedman next. Oh my God. Followed by <laughs> Cynthia Winfield and Lorenzo. Lorenzo, if you are here, I didn't see their name. Uh, Lorenzo, if you're here, let me know. Uh, I didn't see your name. Uh, so if Lorenzo is not here, then Mike Hoff, uh, you will be in three. 
I guess I'm up. Good evening, everyone. Hello from Swampscott, Massachusetts. I don't know if you can interpret my town, but uh, my name is Lee Eric Friedman, and I am the renegade poet laureate of Swampscott, Massachusetts. I run uh, the first Friday open mic, uh, which is sponsored by our local arts organization called Reach Arts. And uh, I will put the information in the chat for our next first Friday, which is August 5th. And Christopher Moore is our feature. Uh, it's not on Facebook yet, but I will put the Reach's website up on the chat. And you can find me on Facebook, just search Lee Eric Friedman. And I am so psyched to be in this collection. Uh, took me a number of years to actually share these poems and this is a true honor and I really, to be in here with Chris and Generalissimo and other friends that uh, are on here is just truly cool. Thank you, Marissa and Lizzie for putting this together. I'm gonna read uh, three poems. Uh, two of them are in the anthology and the, the third one will probably be in out loud number two when that comes out. A moment. His sun-filled body shines, its golden image vibe square into my eyes. I'm drunk with love, I writhe. His embrace envelops, we love. The heavens breathe light from stars and drenched with scented sweat, we slowly merge as one. A moment in time, I cry. A moment in time, we fly. Thank you. Second one is called COVID flirt, because of course you need a COVID poem. Are you heaven sent? That sensual saunter at social distance from the market baskets aisle seven. A signal, how cool. A sharp shock of blonde streaks, a wave of steely black hair. A glance, those eyes, your eyes, deep. Hey, those are nice. I like your boots. Thank you. My name's, well, mine's behind your mask. A sweet smile, a lick of lips. Then, yeah, I might, even that. Sweaty brows blushing cheeks, a faint outline of smiles. Truth or dare? Dare. Wait, I dare you too. Okay, I accept. I dare us both to take them off. But, but, but we can't, winks. Come on, I'll show you mine if you show me yours. Um, um, okay, I agree. Great, ready on three. One, two, three. We both drop masks. Thank you. And the third one, which uh, I do have to uh, thank uh, Robin Reardon, she's a, a novelist. Uh, she lives in the Boston area, apparently. Uh, this is uh, this uh, poem was inspired by her 2011 uh, book called The Evolution of Ethan Poe, and it's called Nipples. Why do men have nipples? An error in evolution, leftover setback, important vestigial prize. A guy's chest is not a smooth slate nor patch of hair. Nipples punctuate two pink compass points of interest, pert attractions on a roadmap that tenders guidance and substance, specific directions of travel on the oftentimes uncharted rocky highway that I nervously and awkwardly head down. I smile, get in here, charmer. Your chest, a blush of red, 
gorgeous. Your nipples like fine wine. This is our roadmap to unfold, our triptych instructions. We explore together and so shines the light when we reach our final destination. Thank you. And I wanna thank Joe and Reed, our ASL interpreters tonight. That's really cool. I've never had my stuff interpreted like that before and I appreciate it. Thank you everybody, bless you and we'll see you soon. Yes, y'all unmute your mics, please give it up for Lee, Eric Friedman, and of course our incredible thank you. ASL nice thank interpreters. You, thank you, thank you. Interpreter Joe and Reed tonight, thank you all so very much for being here. Um, make sure you get me your emails so that I can send you some care packages. Uh, and it's a first for me. I've never had my poetry interpreted either. So I hope it's a first for many of you. Um, and so thank you so much for being here uh, and doing that for us. All right, we got Cynthia Winfield is up next. I do not see Lorenzo in the house. I do not see Mike Hoff. So that means Jaden, you are on deck. I do not see Scott Wiegerman also. I do not see Sarah Bella Mental, which means Johnny Rivers, Space Dragon, you're in three. All right, Cynthia, you got the floor. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much for doing this, um, for including me in the Out Loud anthology, for having the ASL interpreters on. This is pretty cool. Um, what I'm going to share, okay, what I have in the anthology is a chapter that's aligned with my Sovereign Souls series, but it's not there. Um, this is the first book from the series Sovereign Souls Whosoever Edition. It, the artwork is by Shane, um, and all the next covers use this as the basis but have like something else popping up to show what it is. I'll put things in the chat later. Um, I'm going to share from this book two chapters. Uh, some of you may have heard them before, but this is from Harmonia, chapter 19. Imagine a world immensely and beautifully queer. Harmonia's chapter three. Oh, holy mother, there is a God. I freaking got the job. Uptown fashion hired me as a sales girl. Uncle Pete would say, <clears throat> that horse was lucky right out of the gate. Well, crack that crop and call me black caviar because the boys are going down. The hiring manager, Gerald, uses they, them pronouns and they identifies as genderqueer. Not to sound like Aunt Stella, but that language just sounds queer to my ear. But they above is singular, making they identifies grammatically correct and definitely proving God exists. Finding a hiring manager who opened the conversation with their pronouns told me I was on the same track as that Australian filly, ready to be seen as the girl that I am. No need to be turning the sound down. No need to hide my identity behind that ugly gate imposed by society and family, that nasty gate that insists, unless I go by my parent gifted name of Jeremiah, that I must be queer and somehow unacceptable. Today, that idea is going down. Prayerfully, it will stay buried for, as my God knows fully, I am now and have always been a girl. Call me Harmonia, sing my name. My pronouns are she, her, hers. These are such simple pronouns to use. If you want to befriend me, open the gate to my heart by seeing me as the beautiful girl I was born to be. Sure, I don't mind identifying as queer, but mostly I just want to be seen as me, God, because those who read me as male, they bring me down. Parents and teachers only seeing Jeremiah, I'm not down with that. They have such blind eyes. I know their little minds can't handle the flexibility of appropriate pronouns. 
I feel sad for their myopic worldviews, God, for they've made themselves blind. They refuse to see beyond the gates of their limited realities and imagine a world that's immensely and beautifully queer. But that Dear, sweet Gerald, they read me as a girl from the moment I walked in, and not just any girl, but one pretty enough and smart enough to be entrusted to learn the lowdown of this job, to manage merchandising, to learn to upsell all those little extras none of us ever need, and the queer details of retail. Okay, so maybe I'm already a savvy consumer and aware, but I appreciate a workplace where pronouns are flexible. And to imagine I found this right out of the gate. All that conversion therapy, while it could have turned me off to God, it really just turned me off to those who turn their hearing aids down to zero when they hear pronouns. Because in their religion, no girl can have a penis and they stand firmly rooted behind their gates of denial. But I still believe because she is me and this world is wonderfully queer when one's eyes are opened. Thank you, God. And I think I have time for one more. I'll give you Harmonia's chapter five. Chapter 22, Surviving an Attack. Hey, beautiful. It always starts that way. Hey, beautiful. Until they get closer, up close, real personal. Perhaps you're outdoors in the sunshine, or perhaps you're in a more intimate setting, in space you felt should be private. And that's when it all goes south. And my world goes to hell because their sweet smiles disappear. And look, it's a tranny. And she's a he, boys. Suddenly echoes off the walls. Before I comprehend, it's me that's echoing off the walls. My body, my delicate, exquisite, beautiful body is being hurled about as are words like filth and trash and tranny. It's hard to rise above and not take this personally for the pain is excruciating and I am deeply fearful. But these good old boys of the South, they know not what they do and they don't know no better neither. I've not got the right to declare the intimate details of my sexuality or genitalia private. Yet at the same time, they desire I keep my very living being living, breathing, being private, hidden behind those walls, assigned to me at birth in the south wing of a God-forsaken hospital in beautiful Nashville, Tennessee, where the personal destinies of so many are destroyed by misgendering, whether inadvertent or intended. Tranny. On this, what had promised to be a lovely afternoon, these good old boys weren't letting a good tranny-kicking opportunity pass them by. Too bad it wasn't private because the cell phone toting junior journalists only egged them on to get more personal. And after my head had repeatedly been bounced off the walls, I was too dizzy to defend myself as they tore my beautiful handmade patchwork dress from my body as witnessed by the sun's last rays bouncing off that south facing clapboard wall this unfortunate afternoon in South Nashville where headlines will soon announce that a tranny was unfortunately allowed to live. My once beautiful exterior packaging is a tad damage, I'm afraid. Fuck, I can barely breathe. Those bruisers must take private lessons in brutality and how to utilize walls to inflict the utmost damage. Personally, I am thankful to have escaped with my personal junk attached. As much as I'd like to exchange for a package reflecting me, Southern yahoos armed with knives were not what I had in mind for bottom surgery, so I'm thankful that walls were all these boys needed to feel like kings over the tranny. Not Harmonia, not me personally, and while far from private, maybe the brutality will go viral, ruin what little social life I had. I just thank God that they used no worse than fists and boots and walls on this beautiful exterior, exterior, personal, 
casing to this little black tranny's deeply southern with this incarnation's indwelling soul. It's private, y'all. That's that skin remains uncut, split, yes, marred, yes, but not sliced with a blade. My walls are intact, still beautiful. Thank you very much. And I'm going to put in the chat a bunch of links. So I appreciate you. Oh my God, you guys, unmute your mics. Give it up for Cynthia Winfield. Uh, that's so good, Cynthia. Thank you. Thank you. Amazing. Amazing. Yeah. Woo. Yeah. I feel like I've got to decompress a little. Uh, I love it. Uh, thank you all. Again, so vulnerable and passionate and, and brave and courageous uh, in speaking up and being here. All right, we're going to keep rocking and rolling. So uh, I do not see Lorenzo and I do not see Mike Hoff. So we're going to go to Jaden R. Tegan. Um, Jaden, are you feeling up to reading tonight? Yeah, I will. Okay, so Jade is doing this off camera. So we'll just have interpreter read on the um, spotlight. And then I do not see Scott Wiegerman and I do not see Sarah Bella Mental. So Space Dragon Johnny Rivers. You will be next followed by Amanda. Is Amanda here? I do not see Amanda Lafayette Wilson here. All right, Amanda Wilson, I don't see you. So, oh, next was Gina Carrillo, the Black Widow, but she is driving. So she's probably not here anymore either. So uh, we've got Jaden followed by Space Dragon, followed by Poet Sophia Falco. Yes, you must use all three of her names. And then I will wrap it up. If anyone is on, not on the list and in the anthology who would like to read, uh, please I reach out. I think I had just signed up for that 30th spot after Sophia. I'm not sure if it's saved. Who's, uh, so I haven't checked. This is Azeki. Ah, um, Azeki. All right, yes, uh, Azeki. All right, so here's what we'll do. We'll do Jaden. And we'll do Space Dragon, we'll do Sophia, we'll do Ezeki, and then I will wrap all of us up tonight. All right. All right, so first of all, thank you, Marissa, for letting me be a part of this. Um, I, for those of you guys that don't know me, I got sick a few years ago um, and kind of gave up on everything. <laughs> um, but being a part of all this has made me feel wonderful, um, giving me a lot of hope. Uh, so it took me about 26, 27 years to come out to everyone in my family. A um, little backstory, my mom always told me I thought women were pretty, but there's a difference between being thinking someone's pretty and being attracted to them like sexually. Um, so I always hid my feelings. I was like, you know, it's never gonna work out. I'm not gonna be accepted, it's fine. Um, so I want to read three different poems. The last one is the one that's in the book. Um, the first two are kind of like the steps up um, to coming out to my family. So the first one's called Pride. I'm so proud of you. Words I've never heard, at least not from you. I feel like a turd. Others tell me to have pride and to stand tall. For I've been through a lot. Yes, I've been through it all. I question my faith, at least in myself, for I don't feel accepted. Again from you, I feel like an outcast. I feel quite rejected. I'll never fit in as I feel I should. I feel discouraged now. I used to think I could. I could make you smile, make you proud. So proud you'd say it, you'd say it aloud. All I want is some praise. Is that too much to ask? It is indeed quite simple. It is an easy task. I know I should feel proud of myself for all I've done, but until you say it, have I really won? The second one's contemplation. I wrote this the day I came out to my family. Will I be accepted? Will I be rejected? Will I be forever unknown? If I take the wrong step, will I live to regret the feeling of wanting a home? Beads of sweat trickle down my neck, my back. Will I seem cool? Will I seem whack? I feel as though I am having a heart attack. Deep breath, eyes closed, inhale through the nose. I repeat to myself once more, one foot out, even with doubt, for not knowing what's beyond that door. I've got this, I tell myself, one last time. 
Last deep breath, take a step and everything will be fine. And then the last poem, Free, like I said, this is the one in the book. Um, this is after I came out to everyone. Free as a bird, my spirit flies. Free as a bird touching the sky. In the clouds, I have no limit. In the clouds floating within it. I have no restraints on this thing called my soul. I have no restraints, therefore I am whole. My soul has seen what others only dream. My soul is one I can count on, if you know what I mean. Free as a bird, my spirit flies. Free to see the world with my open eyes. Oh, you guys unmute your mics, please. Give it up. Uh, Jason, very nice. Wonderful. Good. Yeah. yeah. Um, um, I'll put my Instagram in the chat and my Facebook in the chat as well. Yes. Thank you so much, y'all. Please follow each other. Uh, be part of the growth of this community. I will tell you, meeting Jaden, um, I started something at Red or Green Books um, called the Legacy Fund. And it is to sponsor manuscripts for people who are terminally ill um, or really, really suffering with disease or illness. So um, that is our way, I think, as a press that we're going to be able to pay it forward uh, to some of our other um, peers and our friends and our fellow, our comrades, uh, our comrades of the pen, right, to, uh, to be able to tell stories in a timely manner. Uh, so, Jaden, thank you so much for your contribution, and I'm really honored to have met you and that we were able to get you into this anthology, and I really look forward to working with you on your book. Uh, it's very, very exciting. All right, thank so you. Scott, Scott Wiegerman is not here, Sarah Bella Mental is not here, so we're going to go to Johnny Rivers Space Dragon, who is here. Yes, I don't see Amanda Wilson, which me, or uh, Black Widow, she had to leave, so we're going to go Johnny of uh, Space Dragon. We're going to go Sophia Falco, poet. Sophia Falco. Azeki, you will be in three. Oh no, did we lose them? Space to rocket. They may have stepped away. Let's see. I know, I know they're here. I, I know they're here. <laughs> Let's see. Um, yes, Cynthia. Yes, the, we're we're doing a legacy, a legacy fund for manuscripts uh, for poets who are terminally ill or or um, going through something. Yes, to get their book done quickly. So we're yeah, we're gonna implement that. All right, Space Dragon. All right, I'm gonna. Did you put the call in the chat? So we'll hopefully they will come back and um, we'll be able to get them up on here. So I do see Poe Sophia Falco is here and she looks ready. Like, she, but she better use all three of her names. She's earned all three of her names. And then uh, we'll see if uh, Space Dragon's ready. And then if not, Ezeki will be on deck. So my screen. All right, yeah, thanks so much for, for having me and, and everyone. It's been great energy uh, here tonight. And um, yeah, it's helped help my morale. It's been kind of low today. So I'm glad to be here and uh, hear everyone's work and passion and everything. So I have uh, three poems. The third one is shorter It ends hopeful. I really feel like I need that reminder for myself. Uh, and um on my screen. I'll just say a little bit about myself first and then, then let the poems, I guess, speak for themselves. So I'm the author of Farewell Clay Dove, published by Uncollected Press in uh, 2021. I'm a mental health advocate, um, dedicated volunteer blogger for the International Bipolar Foundation since April 2020. Uh, extremely important cause as an individual living with this for over a decade. And um, my dream job, I'm working to make a reality, a uh, professor of poetry and off to graduate school. So a uh, third book forthcoming. So thank you to this community and everyone's support. Uh, it's really lifted me and continues to. So um, the poem to kick it off, uh, the, the three, um, let's see. It's titled, 
Birthday blues. Okay. Birthday blues, I hear you. Wishing to fight for you, to see the we in welding. I wish to weld you a shield of any type, tangible or intangible. We need each other, not just a lone individual with that magnificent shining sword. I have fallen for you. I wish to gift you an endless ladder to climb out from this place, headspace, this strife, this life to the top of the world. Yet the world is like a sphere, but still not quite. The universal language you speak of perhaps is the ocean, the water, yet to some, the desert, the sand dunes. To me, universality is seeing past someone's facade into their heart space, their essence, their art, another trip around the sun. And I'm blessed to have met you. Wish I could be dazzle your spirit with glitter to let your spirit shine. Let your spirit breathe deeply. Let the rainbow prevail instead of sorrow raining down your cheek like sweat dripping like the wax of a dying candle the light and dark and dark and light those shadows birthday blues i hear you nowhere near in your shoes yes we do need that ladder to reach for the stars get your eyes when they twinkle with that shine for poetry they are stars to me thank you that's the first piece um this one's titled Poetry is my prayer. Poetry has been uh, the constant in my life. Uh, I've been writing um, for, for a stretch now. And um, I really mean that. It saved me time and time again. And uh, so this one's Poetry is my prayer. I was the one who got away from myself, running and running, worn down countless pairs of running shoes, all colors over the years. If lined up, this would create a rainbow running from the rainbow too even though somewhere over the rainbow rang true in childhood, running myself into the ground, self-hatred deemed the self as weak, laying stomach down, head to the side on the red brick patio with the sun beating down on my back, beads of sweat dripping down while she'd rather want me to wear necklaces of pretty beads, but not the rainbow, no. And that day, too, uh, and that day, all alone, the weight of the world, too much to hold up the sky, trying not to die. If I wasn't a poet, I dare not want to think of what would have happened to me. Cannot be a self-fulfilling prophecy, my moral duty to live, to survive, not up to being another poet who falls, falls off the face of the planet, expectations I don't have the answers, or a beacon of light has been bleak for over a decade, feeling weak, weeks, weeks keep going by, people deem me inspirational, whereas sometimes I am scared of these hands that can also work magic, a double-edged sword, my purple pen is no sword, a sword is not a pen, and this leads me back to when. And uh, to close it off, um, this one's titled Glow Sticks. So switching it up a little bit, um, Glow Sticks. She is asking me to wish upon something I cannot see, to believe in there is another side and a way out, but light pollution and pollution of light, yearning for my eyes to ignite with the sheer amount of power from the hands, waving the countless neon glow sticks at the concert. But to amass this energy, effort and effort, I reiterate to her that I'm so tired and wary, yet she is leading me across as I'm barely hanging on. I made a conscious choice to believe her, belief in the beyond, and with one of my fingers grasping the edge of the lifeboat, she says, that's all you need you have me and that night equipped with my map and my compass arrived at the exact coordinates on the crossroad of hate and hope streets i gazed upwards to wish upon that star that i cannot see but knowing that light exists let's go poet <laughs> sophia Falco. Uh, go, Hi, sophia. Sophia. so nice yes thank you thank you thank you yeah <laughs> Let's go. Yeah. Oh, what an incredible night. I'm so excited. Um, yeah, let's go. We're going to keep this rocking and rolling. Uh, I have a copy to read from uh, before you leave tonight, please. Uh, I'm going to I'm going to round us out this evening um, with a poem after Ezeki reads. Um, 
and I'll give you the, the code again one more time to buy a book, but I'm going to give you a sneak peek on the inside of the book before you leave tonight. Uh, so don't don't go anywhere if, if you don't have to. There's just uh, two other poets tonight to read. All right, Ezeki, would you like to take the stage? Sure. Um, also, did I, I'm not sure if I got it before. Did you say, like, um, if you wanted to make a, like, publish a poetry book of your own to reach out to you at, like, Marissa at redandgreenbooks.com? Is that it? Uh, red or green books.com. Yes. Red or green books. And it, yes. that's like your email, right? That's my email, Marissa, red or green books.com. Red is R E A D. Uh, and yes, I am assembling the, uh, the list to invite for next year's debut poetry launch. So like this year, for example, we have the Fierce 15. Elizabeth Strauss is part of the Fierce 15. Uh, we're, we're debuting in New York City at the Poetry Festival in September. Uh, the, the only criteria is you have to not have previously published a collection of poetry, okay? Uh, so these are all debut authors we're going to be focusing on. If you're interested, let me know. I will put you on the list and send you a letter of intent in January, okay? Okay, cute. Um, love it. Uh, sh should I take it away then, as they say? Um, okay, hey, what it do? Uh, I'm Azeki, A-Z-E-K-I, and I just nicknamed myself on Zoom, but I do also want you to know my full name, Azeki MJ Ali. Um, it stands for Azeki Mikhail Jeremy Ali. And I also have um, a website uh, normally where you could view more of my material, my first and last name, A-Z-E-K-I-A-L-I dot com. Um, I'm like, did I just misspell my, no, I didn't. And um, yes, I have photos I'm going to explain a little. Um, and um, that's all to say my website temporarily down just because a couple weeks ago I couldn't pay that annual fee, but in a couple days, just you wait. Um, and yeah, so just a little bit of background. These pictures um, come from, I think, um, maybe exactly a year and some days ago, um, like this, uh, this artist friend of mine, he's also queer, um, he, he does body painting, nude body painting or whatever. I've never done it before. I was kind of uncomfy, believe it or not, um, for a little bit and mostly in a jack strap while I was being painted. But, um, I was nude body painted nevertheless it was new york city body painting day um last summer and then i had um right after that event went to this photography model meetup thing that i was already going to and then got all these other cool pictures and then i combined some some of the cool pictures i got with some poetry i made i think specifically for when i posted some of these pictures um, and I don't know if, I don't think the like original color or essence is necessarily printed in the book or at least the online version I see. So once again, follow me on the Instagram and scroll if you want to see more about it or like the original photos, A-Z-E-K-I-A-L-I -I, um, is my Instagram. And without further ado, these are my two poems in this anthology. <clears throat> Your fetish is toxic. It makes me all kinds of sick. Does my color passing by intensify your gaze, your unwelcomed eyes? Your oversaid compliments are excuses because I see right through you creatures obsessing over my features. Your defensiveness when I reject you, you suddenly claiming to be disgusted Claiming that we all like this, too. Nah. In my most poetic words, disrespectfully, fuck you. That's the first poem. And then, just to get straight into the next one, self-explanatory, really. Um, the next one is titled, I Am Art. And, yeah, I believe the first one wasn't titled, but... Just know, second one, 
I am art. And let me just say aside, this one of my favorite photos by this um, photographer, friend of mine, Andre Woodard, and he is also queer, black, and um, was like the personal photographer at the nude body painting event that was also a friend of um, the painter. I am art. My body is a canvas. My hair is an extension, a dimension of twirls, curls, and swirls. Color is beautiful. Color is rich on me. It makes me look like a bad bitch. We are the future. I rep a nation of a new generation. Melanated. Supposedly hated. Celebrated. And in the nude, I almost feel embarrassed. And yet, to be, to feel so comfortable. We are art. Our our bodies are canvases, melanated, supposedly hated, should be celebrated. Those are my poems. Thanks. Yes, let's go, you guys. But mute your mics, please. Yeah. Rizeki, give him some, give him some love. Oh, oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. Let's go. All right, this is it's so much fun uh, t today uh, to be doing this. Um, so yeah, let's go. I'm gonna wrap us up tonight. A, a few I'm gonna say a huge shout out to Elizabeth Sophia Strauss, our um, our just incredible brains behind the operation of this anthology. Uh, the workforce, the heart, the soul uh, behind Out Loud and getting this really to print, uh, getting this uh, ass assembled and put together and edit and well, yeah, all of that. I mean, it, it was an absolute team effort, but without Lizzie, it would never have happened. Uh, this was something that was in her mind's eye from the beginning. And Lizzie, I, I hope I was able to check off some bucket list items for you this year. <laughs> Uh, and I really hope to be able to check off more for you in the coming years. I mean, you've checked off a couple dozen. You got to come to New Mexico. I know that is on your bucket list. I know you're like, have, you're, you'd be like, I have to come to New Mexico. Uh, no. Even, eventually. <laughs> I got to get to San Francisco first. But um, no, Marissa just, she checks off more boxes than I can think of. I She published a book of brand new poetry I created this year, just because she cheer is a cheerleader, not just for me, but this community. I am, am beyond grateful to her. And I, it, it is really, um, it's surreal that we're sitting here together. Um, I didn't mean to cut you off, Marissa, I just wanted to talk for a second. But it's surreal that we're sitting here together where I just had this idea a year ago and it's real and we're all very brave and it's beautiful and I can't, I'm getting the books in a few days and I'm so excited to hold it. And I'm so excited to meet everyone when they get to sign it and just read from it and read all your poetry at mics and just brag about you and how amazing all and the, the beautiful art we've heard and seen tonight. And I just wanna thank our ASL interpreters um, for everything you've done for our community tonight. Um, it's beautiful to watch the interpretation to see all the art come to life uh through that way of communicating so thank you i don't know if this is the correct gesture but i think it is um thank you for doing that if not i apologize i, I tried to learn it online but thank you so much for all your efforts tonight into our community um and i'm just very grateful and um i get to meet marissa in like a month and a half so i'm excited for that I know it's so it's so soon it's coming it's it's very soon uh I'm very excited for New York City uh and definitely thank you um the ASL interpreters read and Joe thank you so much Joe I don't have your email so if you could send me your email or if, if interpreter read has your email maybe they could send me your email um I would love to send you a little care package from New Mexico uh with copy of this book and um a big thank you uh, I love sending people some chili and spices from New Mexico. So, so yeah, let's go. Um, oh, there it is. Thank you. Let me, I got to write it down because uh, the chat goes fast on here. And uh, 
Okay. I'm going to finish this up. So give you a quick insight into the book. I'm going to read you the dedication because this is for all of you. For those who came before us, those who have not found their voice yet, and those still to speak out loud. This is for you. Every single um, poet in here has their own author page. It's important that all of you contributors have space in here to share your story. So uh, when you receive the book, you'll have a whole page for every single contributor followed by their work. All right. Um, their handles, where you can find them on social media, all of that is in here. So thank you all so very much. Um, the, the artwork is incredible. Uh, the artwork that's in here, like Kayla, Kayla Granger's artwork. I mean, Aziki is um, red. Azeki, by the way, common mistake, Azeki. not Aziki. Um, Azeki's um, artwork is incredible. And now I love the story you told behind it with the body painting. Um, yeah, I body paint people and it's very true. You feel very naked, but then when you have paint on you, you feel very covered up. So yeah. Like that I bitch one might say. <laughs> I love when you said that. Yes, Azeki's artwork is amazing. Please, please um, get this book so that we can continue to fund other projects. Um, I am a bi, a queer and uh, polyamorous poet from New Mexico. Uh, I never thought that little old me in the, the desert would ever be here with all of you. So thank you for being here with me. This poem is titled, Don't Say Gay. Shh, don't say gay. It's the gateway drug. Well, here's what I say to your shushing. Gay, 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 mother gay I will say gay anywhere anytime I want because I am not against the law we are not against the law and if you say it is the law then the law is wrong laws written by straight white men with their dicks so far up in the bible hoping their own gay tendencies won't send them to hell and pray no one talks about private parts laws championed by scared adults who make their problems their children's problems, who haven't unpacked their own crap, so they pr pass around trauma instead of progress at the dinner table. We need to say gay. We need to say gay often and early while valuing people equally. Tell me, what age do you think kids should know their gender? Dress them in blue or pink, give them title boy or girl which restroom to use when we all shit? When is it age appropriate to learn compassion and community, acceptance and empathy, to teach our children that curiosity won't kill them, that the adults won't shame them for their questions, and it's completely normal to feel different than you look or been told you have to be? What is the age of consent? for kids who just want to please, who can't say no, since no was never taught that it's a whole answer, please. Queer kids know, and they know early how they feel, how they feel inside about who they are and what they want. Have you ever talked to a trans kid? Those are some of the strongest humans you will ever meet, if they live, if they choose to live, if they don't get killed. Education is based on fact and study, so educate yourself fact. This year, two out of 10 high school kids will seriously consider or attempt suicide. Almost half are gay. Of the ones who survive, 80% will attempt again in six months. And if you say, well, I don't have kids, it's not my problem. Shame on you. Kids are the responsibility of the community. You could be a safe adult for them. You could be a friend. 
Gay is not a clinical condition. Gay children are not under a spell. This is not a learned behavior. Children cannot catch gay. What they can catch is hate, bullies, bullets, beatings, homelessness, abuse, starvation, trafficking, trauma, rape, death. They can catch it like a cold. Of all the things we have to talk to our kids about in school, fire drills, lockdowns, bullying, active shooters, police brutality, how in the how absolute hell is gender identity and sexual orientation the big no-no? Oh no, have convos with your kids. Validate their questions and educate yourself. Change the way we see each other treat each other, love each other. I won't go quietly into the abyss of censorship. I say gay. What do you say? Thank you. Thank you all so much for being here tonight. Please. Thank you, Marissa. Thank you for putting it Thank, Thank you. you so much, Marissa Woo! and Lucy, Woo! entrepreneurs. Woo! Yeah. Thank, Thank you, Elizabeth, you. and everybody involved. <laughs> Great reading, everybody. Thank you so much. Get a copy of the book. Please support the press. Please support these authors. Uh, support the gun violence anthology that is coming out. See you again uh, Sunday, August 7th, 4. Blew that. Uh, from Red or Green Books. That is our next poetry reading. If you are not signed up for that, poets, and you're uh, published from Red or Green Books, then please uh, get signed up so we can uh, we can get you on that. Uh, one more time, um, if everyone would just unmute your mics. Thank you, all the readers. Thank you, our ASL interpreters, Reed and Joe. Oh my gosh, you guys have been just stunning, and thank you for hanging in with us. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah. Oh. So much love in this building, y'all. Thank you so much. Um, if I could do anything for any of you, please reach out to me. Let me know. I'll do whatever I can to move mountains for you. Otherwise, I will see you next time. Peace, love, blessings, and next thank time. you Thanks. for helping all of us say it out loud. Yay. Hey. 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 Good night, everyone. Hey. Good night. Hey. Good night. 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 Good